Welcome to Ultimate Learning Hub, a platform developed to ensure that we have universal transformative learning experience. In our today's session, we are going to look at regulatory framework. Now, regulatory framework introduces the regulatory systems run by International Accounting Standards Board. Regulatory framework is concerned with ISB's relationship with other bodies and with the way the ISB operates. So the fulcrum of regulatory framework is International Accounting Standards Board. It looks at the relationship that International Accounting Standards Board has with other bodies like Standards Advisory Council, Interpretation Committee, the Foundation, and with the way IASB is run. So basically this session Look, or this section looks at the regulatory system in general, and it revolves around International Accounting Standards Board. Now, when we look at the summary of regulatory framework, regulatory framework can have two dimensions. Regulatory framework guides in the preparation of financial statements, and also there is the corporate governance aspect, where corporate governance is are the systems by which organizations are directed and controlled. So it looks at the control of organizations on one end, and on the other hand, it looks at preparation of financial statements. At the lower level of the regulatory framework, we under the financial statements preparation, we look at, at the national level. We look at the national financial reporting standards, national laws that are put in place to regulate to regulate accountancy profession. We look at the market regulations, and we also look at stock market rules or security markets rules. On the other hand, beyond the national level, there is the international level. And in this case, we focus on international financial reporting standards. We look at the regulatory bodies that are involved in these international financial reporting standards development review in interpretation and advisory and in this case we have international financial reporting standards foundation we have international accounting standards board we have international financial reporting standards interpretation committee and we also have international financial reporting standards advisory council on the other hand, corporate governance, which we have said is the systems by which organizations are directed and controlled, looks at the ownership of businesses versus the control of the businesses. Remember, shareholders are the ones who own businesses, but they delegate the role to control businesses to the directors to the directors. Therefore, the directors take stewardship of the businesses on behalf of the owners who are the shareholders. At the end of the day, there is a need for effective governance and accountability to ensure that this system, the, this entire system operates effectively in terms of preparation of financial statements and also in terms of corporate governance. Now, why do we need the regulatory framework? Is it important to have the regulatory framework? The answer is yes. The first reason why we need the regulatory framework is to ensure that the needs of the users of financial statements are met. There must be a regulatory body to ensure that they check and ensure that all that the users need, all their needs are met with a list of basic minimum of information. The second reason why we need the regulatory framework is to ensure that all the information provided in the relevant economic arena is both comparable and consistent. Remember, standards help to enhance comparability and standards also helps to improve on consistency to ensure that we are consistent in the way we report our financial statements or in the way we present our financial statements. Number three, to increase users' confidence in the financial reporting process. Having an effective regulatory framework helps to boost the confidence of the users in the entire financial reporting process. And finally, to regulate the behavior of companies and directors towards their investors. And this is where the corporate governance comes in. Accounting standards, therefore, on their own, would not be sufficient 
to achieve these aims. So standards alone, be it international accounting standards, be it international financial reporting standards, be it even international public sector accounting standards on their own, they are not enough to enable us achieve these objectives. Therefore, we need a regulatory framework to help support what has been developed in the accounting standards. In addition, there must be some legal and market-based regulations so that different businesses, entities, depending on their nature, for example, public companies must be regulated by the Capital Markets Authority and maybe the rules of the stock exchange markets. Now, a regulatory system, what is the link between ISB and the other bodies? In the apex of the system or of the of the system is International Accounting Standards Foundation, Committee Foundation. Now, International Accounting Standards Committee Foundation is at the top, and the fulcrum, the central part, is the International Accounting Standards Board, which is supported by the International Financial Reporting Interpretation Committee and also the Standards Advisory Council. Remember, at the top, there is the foundation, and in the central part, which is linked to the foundation, interpretation committee, and advisory council, there is the IASB. Now, if we start with the institution at the top, which is known as International Financial Reporting Standards Foundation, or committee foundation, the foundation is the supervisory body for the International Accounting Standards Board. For it to be at the apex, it monitors what the board does and is responsible for the governance issues and ensuring that member bodies are properly funded. So those other bodies, the foundation's role is to ensure that there is responsible, it's responsible for governance issues and also ensures that all the other bodies are funded properly. The principal objective of the foundations are, there are four principal objectives. Number one, to develop a set of high quality, understandable, enforceable, and globally accepted financial reporting standards. And number two, to promote the use of rigorous application of those standards. Now, developing standards is one thing, but application of the standards, it's another point. So ensure that once the standards have been developed, they can be applied to ensure the standards that have been developed are applied. The third point is to take account of the financial reporting needs of emerging economies and the small and medium-sized entities. And lastly, to bring about the convergence of national and international financial reporting standards. So the foundation ensures that both the national and international bodies, all their needs are converged together. In this fulcrum, as we had stated, is the International Accounting Standards Board. The board is an independent standard setting body of the foundation. So in Regards to the setting of standards, it's the mandate of the International Accounting Standards Board to ensure that new standards are developed and even the existing standards are reviewed. Its members are responsible, that is the members of the board, are responsible for the development and applica application of international financial reporting standards and their interpretations, which, and these interpretations are done by another body, which is the Interpretations Committee. Upon its creation, so when the IASB was created, IASB adopted all the existing International Accounting Standards Board. So when it was developed, the board was set up, they had to adopt all the accounting standards that were existing by then. And of course, later on, some of the standards were reviewed and even some changed. The next body is International Financial Reporting Interpretation Committee. So from the word interpretation, it means the key mandate of this body is to ensure that the standards are interpreted, are interpreted effectively or well interpreted. So the International Financial Reporting Interpretation Committee, it reviews widespread accounting issues 
on a timely basis and provides authoritative guidance on those issues. In other words, its main job is to do the interpretations. Now, the meetings are open to the public. The public can join the meetings of the IFRIC, just like the meetings of the ISB can also be joined by the public. And they work closely also just like I is just like the foundation, they also work closely with the national standard setters. Finally, there is the Standards Advisory Council. The council is the formal advisory body. So the keyword is advisory, body to the board and the foundation. So if there is any advisory service to be given to the board that requires some expertise in that case, Standards Advisory Council comes in. The objective of the Standard Advisory Council are, the objectives are, number one, advising the board on the agenda decisions and priorities in their work. So it's the duty of Standards Advisory Council to set the agenda for the IASB. And number two, informing the ISB of the views of the council with regard to major standard setting projects with regard, sorry, to the major standard setting projects. And lastly, giving other advice to the board or to the trustees. Now, those are the bodies that are interlinked with the International Accounting Standards Board. There is the foundation at the top. On the side, there is the Standards Advisory Council, and also on the other side, all below it, there is the Interpretation Committee. And at the center, there is the International Accounting Standards Board. Now, there is also, apart from the preparation of financial statements and also development of accounting standards, which is the main duty of the ISB, there is also the other aspect of management of companies. And in this case, we look at both the ownership and control of companies. In other words, we look at both the shareholders and also we look at the directors. Shareholders are the owners, and the, on the other hand, the directors are the people who stewards the company. Now, what is corporate governance? According to Cadbury Report 1992, corporate governance is the system by which companies are directed and controlled. The systems by which organizations are directed and controlled. How do we direct and control the different businesses or organizations that we run? What is the purpose and what is the objective of corporate governance? The purpose of corporate governance is to monitor the parties within a company who control the resources and the assets of the owners. So basically the purpose of the corporate governance is to monitor what the directors are doing because directors are the ones who control the resources and the assets of the owners. So that is the major basic purpose of corporate governance to monitor what the directors are doing who are in charge of resources and the assets of the owner. On the other hand, what is the objective of corporate governance? Is to ensure that there is sound corporate governance, which contributes to improved corporate performance and accountability. So the key point there is there is corporate performance and there is also accountability. Now, what are the basic elements of a good corporate governance framework or of sound corporate governance. What are some of the elements that we look at? There are seven elements that we can focus on when we are looking at sound corporate governance. The first one is to ensure there is effective management. Remember, it's the duty of the directors who have control over the company on behalf of shareholders to ensure there is effective management. The second element that we look at is effective systems of internal control, effective systems of internal control. The third element of sound corporate governance is oversight of management by non-executive directors to ensure that there is somebody who monitors the management. So there are non-executive directors whose main task is to oversee the management operations, to have an oversight, to have an eye over what the management are doing. The next element is, the fourth element is fair remuneration of directors. So sound corporate governance 
an element, there must be an element which must be incorporated that ensures that the directors are rewarded well, are well rewarded. Because if directors are well rewarded, rewarded, they'll also perform their tasks responsibly. It is assumed they will perform their tasks effectively. The fifth element is fair financial reporting. Sound corporate governance ensures fair financial reporting. And number six, so we must put in place mechanisms that will ensure there is sound or fair financial reporting. And that's why also we have the conceptual framework, which has got some qualities that needs to be followed. And number six is to ensure there is constructive relationship with shareholders at any given time to ensure that the directors have got an effective and constructive relationship with shareholders. And lastly, to ensure fair appraisal of performance of directors. At the end of a given period or at the end of the year, the director's performance must be measured. In summary, when we talk of corporate governance, there is the purpose and there is the objective. What is the main purpose of corporate governance? To monitor, main purpose is the primary purpose, to monitor the parties within a company who control the resources owned by investors. On the other hand, the primary objective is to ensure corporate performance and accountability. There are also supporting purposes of corporate governance to ensure there is a suitable balance of power on the board of directors to ensure executive directors are remunerated fairly. We recall the elements of the, the seven elements of, an, of sound corporate governance. Number three, to make the board of directors responsible for monitoring and managing risks. Number four, to ensure to ensure the external auditors remain independent and free from influence of the company because co sound corporate governance will set in place the reporting mechanisms for the external auditors so that the external auditors are not influenced by the management in full -less. And the last supporting purpose is to address other issues like business ethics, CSR, and protection of whistleblowers. On the other hand, the supporting objectives are control, control the controllers by increasing the amount of reporting and disclosure to all stakeholders. The second objective is to increase level of confidence and transparency in the company activities to ensure the company is run in a legal and ethical manner. And finally, to build in control at the top that will cascade down to the organization. In summary, that is what we call regulatory framework. And that brings us to the end of the session on regulatory framework. Thank you for joining Ultimate Learning Hub where we have said it's a platform that was developed to ensure we have universal transformative learning experience. Let's meet in our next session.